Hello and welcome. I am Ladi Akiri Duluali. Tonight, Nigeria's top military chiefs discuss strategies to tackle renewed attacks by Boko Haram terrorists in the northeast state of Borno. The Bring Back Our Girls group hits the streets of Abuja again, demands rescue of remaining 113 Chibok girls from Boko Haram captivity. Ghanaian President Nana Akufo-Addo visits Nigeria, makes case for deeper regional and continental collaboration on trade and security. And at least 20 are killed as a bomb explodes in a mosque in Afghanistan. And on the business news tonight, Nigeria's manufacturing and non-manufacturing activities increase fourth consecutive month in July. And on sports news tonight, World Rugby Union sets lift suspension under Nigeria Rugby Federation following the inauguration of a new board. And from Abuja, residents of southern Nasarawa in Nina, Niger State, count losses following past surge in their homes, resulting in the electrocution of two members of their community. We begin tonight with a move by Nigeria's service chiefs to review their counter-terrorism tactics in the wake of renewed attacks by Boko Haram terrorists. The meeting, which held for more than five hours, is on the orders of the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, who told them to return to the theater of war and re-strategize against the insurgents. After the meeting, the director of defense information, Major General John Enenche, told reporters that the chief of defense staff read a riot act to the chief of army staff as well as the chief of air staff on the reviewed strategic direction and operational plans in line with presidential directives. Service chiefs to move to Medugri, which is the epicenter of the Northeast counterinsurgency and counterterrorism operations. This move and action is expected to give impetus to the military efforts in the Northeast operations. Consequently, the defense headquarters hereby appeal to the general public and the people in the affected areas directly by these negative acts of terrorism and criminality to come forward with credible information that will further assist the security and response agencies to point out some of the key information required which include the following. One, terrorist sleeper cell locations, terrorist concentration areas and outpost locations, collaborators and informants to the terrorists, suspicious habitations and living quarters within rural and urban centers, and lastly, amongst others, is suspicious isolated settlements and camps outside normal living areas. So what that translates to is that more time, operational time, will be given to the theater. That is the translation in real military practice, operational practice. So here is now their forward headquarters. Then you have the headquarters main, which will still remain their various offices, so that they can now run the whole armed forces on equal basis. An instruction and a directive has been given to the theater command to get uh, Shekau dead or alive. That directive still stands, and we believe that with the cooperation of the general populace and the public here, it can be done. Nigeria's Director of Defense Information, Major General John Enenche. The acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, is worried about the abduction of the minors from the University of Maiduguri by Boko Haram militants, and he is assuring Nigerians that government would do everything possible to secure their release. But it is not just the minors alone. The acting president is also promising that all citizens of the country held captive by the insurgents, including the Chibok girls, would be freed. He, however, refused to comment on whether the government would negotiate with the abductors, but insists oil exploration will continue in the Lake Chad Basin. 
These individuals who have, who have risked their lives uh, are individuals whose safety and security is the first business of government. And that's why we're completely committed to ensuring that they are brought back safely. What we're committed to doing is ensuring that these uh, persons who have been held are returned. In the same way that we've ensured uh, to the extent that it's possible that all of those who have been abducted, the Chibok girls, anyone who has been abducted, is returned home. That's that, that's that, that's the policy of our government, and we we believe that this is our, our duty, is our obligation to our citizens, and in particular those who are so who are engaged in national service, such as these individuals who have now been who have now been detained. But I mean, of course, that's that that, that as I said, is one of the critical things that we have to do, and we are committed to doing it, and we will do. So. We will ensure that they are brought home safely. Acting President Yami Oshibajo. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society wants the federal government to explore all options to free the geologists abducted by Boko Haram terrorists in Borno State. The president of the society, Professor Silas Dada, wants the federal government to negotiate with the terrorists, just like it's doing for the missing Chibok girls. He says of nine members of staff of the University of Maiduguri involved in the attack, five are geologists, two of whom have been killed, two were abducted, and one is still missing. We owe ourselves and generations to come the obligation to, co to commend the efforts of the present administration of President Muhammad Buhari in putting a stop to this national disgrace called Boko Haram. We want the military to urgently swing into action and adopt negotiation method. We also wish to state that the war against Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria has dragged on for too long and will therefore urge the federal government to redouble its efforts in the fight against the insurgency in the northeast so that the Boko Haram problem is stamped out permanently sooner than later. The Bring Back Our Girls group today renewed calls for the release of the remaining 113 Chibok girls abducted from their school hostel in April of 2014. The group marched through the streets of Abuja with placards reminding the federal government of the need to ensure that security operatives rescue the remaining girls in captivity. They are also advocating the enlightenment of Nigerians and the content of the Constitution in order to allow them know-how to demand for their rights. It is another march through the streets of Abuja as members of the Brimbeck of Girls demand the rescue of 113 girls who are still being held in captivity by Boko Haram. The march reaches its final destination, the villa, but at the entrance, a detachment of policemen and other security agencies prevent the group from proceeding onwards. despite the action of the security agencies, conveners of the group explain the reason behind the march. We are most delighted that today we at least have 106 families that are happy with the return of their children. However, 106 is not 50% of the girls abducted. We still have 113 of our Chiba girls out in the wild as captives of terrorists. We have said it and will continue to say it. The rescue of our Chibogas is not a privilege, it's their right as enshrined in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The political advisor to the acting president, however, assures members of the group of the government's commitment to rescue the remaining 113 girls and all other abducted persons. The acting president is fully with you and he recognizes what you are doing and is hearing you loud and clear. On the issue of, uh, of uh, the women, the police women that have been held and the, and the girls that have still been held, on a daily basis the acting president has been meeting with the security chiefs, making contacts with negotiators you know, across the world 
who have helped in, 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 in the past to secure those that have been released. So we have not for any time, for any moment, forgotten these children who could be, you know, any of our children. Although it is 1,205 days since the April 14th, 2014, abduction of the girls from the Chiba community in Borno State, out of which 106 have been rescued. The Brimbaka girls' campaigners remain steadfast in their campaign of keeping the government on its toes until the rest of the 113 girls are returned home. I'm now being joined on the News at 10, live from our Abuja studios, by the co convener of the Bring Back Our Girls group and former Minister of Education, Mrs. Obi Ezekwesili. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ezekwesili, for joining us. Now, uh, Thank you. less than 50% of the Chibok girls, which are the primary focus of your group, have been released. Are you satisfied with what government says are its efforts to get the remaining uh, girls freed? We are not satisfied because the government is not communicating enough. And we don't mean this in a non-factual way. The government has not communicated uh, to the families of the remaining 113 Chibok school girls. We constantly get uh, their calls. We get uh, emissaries from them saying, please don't allow the government to forget our 113 girls that are left behind with Boko Haram. And so it is necessary that the government should give progress report on the effort it is putting in. It cannot in any way behave as though we should understand that it is working. We know what is called bureaucratic inertia. We know what is called resting on your oars. We know what complacency can do to this kind of uh, important uh, activity uh, that, that, that we expect the government to focus on. And so we're not going to allow the government uh, just get into some form of lethargy, uh, thinking that... Um, it can deliver on this whenever it delivers on it. It is of utmost urgency that the rest of the girls be rescued. Now, uh, the government says it is working, that it's not resting on its oars, but that some of these uh, processes, the strategies, uh, require some level of confidentiality, and therefore it cannot necessarily come to the public until it has some concrete results to show. That doesn't make sense? You know, um, Ladi, I think that the reasonableness of the movement lies in the fact that we have always uh, agreed that there are sensitive elements in uh, whatever government uh, does to secure the girls. However, we have constantly requested the government to manage the process of what it does as competently as possible in order that there would be sufficient information that does not compromise security information, at least to the parents of the missing schoolgirls. When government behaves as though the right to know does not belong to citizens, especially affected families, it must be called out for that failure. I believe that what the government needs to do differently is to be able to appreciate the, the, the level of this consolate uh, status of the ones whose children are not back and to manage the process of information um, provision to them in ways that would give them reason to believe that government has not forgotten their daughters. Now we have uh, about 30 or 45 seconds left, so I, I, I'll ask that your answer to this be short. Have you been in contact now with the girls who have so far been freed as part of their rehabilitation process? Have, they, have you been in communication? Is the communication on that level better between the government, your group, and the parents of the girls? No, we have played absolutely no role in that. Because for us, as a movement, our advocacy is committed to ensuring that girls are rescued. The girls are retrieved from their captors. Um, the government has taken custody of the girls. What we 
want to make sure happens is that the community from which the girls come, the families of the girls, have as much access to the girls and able to determine the costs of their rehabilitation and reintegration into society. And for us, that's good enough. We do not in any way want to um, uh, uh, impose ourselves as needing to do anything uh, to, uh, in, the, in, the, in the process of their rehabilitation. So we don't have any form of access or direct uh, relationship with uh, the girls that have been rescued. But the members of the movement who are from Chibo community, those parents that are in touch with the movement continue to tell us about the slow progress and sometimes the good enough progress that's being made. Thank you very much, uh, co-convener of the Bring Back Our Girls campaign, Mrs. Obi Thank you for joining us on the News at 10.